Do you feel like working a third shift at a call center for the next five years to purchase a monster truck you can use to grind your math textbook into dust? That's awesome. We can help you avoid those sleepless nights with this video from Fort Bend Tutoring and Mr. Witt. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about the differentiation of trigonometric functions. All right, so there we go. We're going to be finding the first derivative of these trig functions. How about that? That sounds a lot better to digest, right? So here we have on this first page, we have a list. That's right. We have a list of your common trigonometric functions and their derivatives. All right, so in other words, if I'm trying to find the derivative of a sine function, then the derivative of that is going to be the cosine of that u, in other words, that function of x, times the derivative of that function of x. All right, and that's the way it plays plays out in most of these trigonometric functions. So if you go ahead and just gaze upon them there, we have the cosine function, we have the tan function, we have cosecant, we have secant, we have cotangent, all right? So we got you covered for your six trigonometric functions and their derivatives, all right? So go ahead and jot those down before we go ahead and dig into some examples here, all right? There you go, there you go, there you go. Remember that you can press the pause button in order to capture all of that, so no comments about but I didn't capture it all. Well, just, just press pause. All right, there you go. So what we're going to do now is dive into our first problem. Let's check it out. In problem one here, we have f of x equals 2 cosine x. And we're going to find the first derivative of this function. And the derivative of this function is going to be 2, just bringing down that coefficient. And then the derivative of cosine x is going to be negative sine x. All right, just like that. Now remember on the previous page, we said that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x times the derivative of x. Well, the derivative of x is one. So one times anything is gonna be itself. So if you wanna show that, you can. And this shows that I'm taking the derivative of that x, all right? And then you can just simplify all of this, and this will give you a negative two sine x as your answer. You got it, ladies and gentlemen. And we are going to put a box around this answer. That's right. We're going to put a red box around the answer because that's how we roll. That's right. Red boxing it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on to our next problem. All right, so in problem number two, we have y equals sine of 2x. And to be honest with you, many times this is written as sine of the quantity 2x, all right? And this helps us identify where our u is. So now I'm able to say that my u is going to be equivalent to 2x, and that u prime, in other words, the derivative of u, is going to be 2. Okay, so now that I have that, using our differentiation rules from our first page that I showed you, we'll know that y prime is going to be equal to cosine of u, which is 2x, times u prime, which is 2. All right, so now that I have that, to simplify the result, I'll write my answer as 2 cosine of the angle 2x, all right? So that's exactly what your answer should look like. In other words, taking the derivative of that sine function will give you cosine of u times the derivative of u, and that's exactly what we had in this step right here. And then, of course, to rewrite it, you're going to put that coefficient of 2 in front where it belongs, all right? So let's red box it. There you go, all right, because that's what you came for. That's right, you came for the answers to this, right? Problem number three. We have h of x equals three times tan of four x squared. All right, so let's go ahead and recognize that our u here is gonna be four x squared. So let's go ahead and state that, and then find out the derivative of u, which is gonna be two times four is eight, and then we have our x. In other words, I'm using the power rule. Mm-hmm. So if you need a reminder about the power rule, <laughs> check out that video right down there, okay? There you have it. So then the derivative of h is gonna be h prime of x, all right? is going to be equal to our coefficient of 3 times the derivative of tan, which is going to be secant squared. And that's going to be of our same u function, which is 4x squared, then times the derivative of u, which is 8x. All right. So this is what I have right here. So now simplifying this, we end up with 3 times 8x, which is going to be 24x 
we'll bring down that secant squared of our u, which is 4x squared, just like that, all right? So we ended up with 24x by multiplying that coefficient times our u prime, in other words, that 8x, to give us 24x, and then we brought down the secant squared of our u, which happens to be 4x squared. And that's it, red boxing it. Gift wrapping the answer. That's right, give your teacher a nice present. Mm -hmm. The correct answer. Let's move on to the next problem. All right, let's go ahead and move on up like George and Wheezy. We have four, which is gonna be F of theta equals one fourth sine squared of two X. All right, when I have a problem such as this, I would wanna go ahead and rewrite it because we can actually show that we can implement the chain rule in this. I can rewrite this as F of theta equals one fourth and I'll go ahead and implement some brackets and some parentheses in here to make it look all nice and neat. Just like that. All right, I can show that this is equivalent to sine of two theta squared. All right, so now that I have it in this form, you may easily see now that we can use this chain rule on this sine function inside of it. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. Now finding the derivative of this, we can say that f prime of theta is gonna be equal to one fourth times two, bringing that exponent down as a coefficient using the chain rule, times our original function of sine of two theta, all right, then times the derivative of the inside. Now remember, within our brackets here, we have sine of two theta. So the derivative of sine is cosine of two theta, then times the derivative of two theta, which is gonna be two. All right, so this is what we're looking at thus far. All right, and now simplifying this, if you were to multiply one fourth times two times two, you'll end up with one. Yeah, you will, see? A one fourth times two is one half, and then one half times two gives you one. See, you don't even believe me. What's wrong with you? So then, we'll go ahead and bring down this sine of two theta, all right, times the cosine of two theta, and this is gonna be our answer right here. There you have it. So this is gonna be the first derivative of one fourth sine squared two theta. Red boxing it. You got it, ladies and gentlemen. That gives you your response for problem number four. And now on to our next problem. All right, here we have problem number five. And in it, we have y equals secant of cosine x. All right, so what that means to us, ladies and gentlemen, is that we'll recognize that our u, aka our function of x that we are taking the secant of, is going to be cosine x, all right? Which means that u prime is gonna be a negative sine of x. That's right, in other words, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So utilizing that information, we can find out what y prime is. So y prime is equivalent to secant of cosine x, times tan of cosine x times the derivative of cosine x, which happens to be negative sine x. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. All right, so if you were considering writing this in a prettier way, I guess you could go ahead and put that negative sine x in front. That might make it a little cuter. So we'll have negative sine x times secant of cosine x times tan of cosine x. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You have a boxable answer right there. So let's go ahead and box it up, just like that. Go ahead and box up this answer. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to go ahead and complete this video on finding the differentiation of trigonometric functions. And please note that, of course, there's many, many other variations out there. This was just an intro, so keep that in mind as you're plugging away. And you can definitely continue to use those rules on the first page that you found. So, as always, please go ahead and rate, comment, and subscribe. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. And if you're able, please donate as that helps us bring you more free tutorials from Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. Thanks for watching. We feel great knowing that you got some help and you're safe and sound. Now, if you'd be so kind as to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fort Bend Tutoring, and like us on Facebook. We'd be much obliged.